CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I am Naja Sherman and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Let's take a quick look at today's top stories. Off the top, terrifying moments after a mass shooting at the Hollywood Broadwalk. CBS News Miami's Ted Scouten has the very latest. A total of two people are under arrest in connection with this shooting that happened on the Broadwalk in Hollywood on Memorial Day. Take a look at some surveillance video. It shows that shooting has people running for their lives. In all, nine people were hit. Those two people who have been arrested are facing gun-related charges. Hollywood police say at this point it does not appear that they are the actual shooters. Now, other surveillance video shows a total of three people who police are looking for. Get a good look. Investigators said they found five weapons here on the scene. Two of them stolen, one from Miami-Dade, the other from Texas. As for the victims, six remain in the hospital. Four of them are children between the ages of 1 and 17. Of those six who are still in the hospital, all of them are listed in stable condition. We'll have much more coming up on CBS News Miami at 5 and 6. In Hollywood Beach, Ted Scout, CBS News Miami. Thank you, Ted. Stay with CBS News Miami on air and online for continuing coverage of the mass shooting. We will bring you any new developments as soon as we get them. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. And taking a live look outside, scattered showers are popping up across South Florida, and some of those downpours are certainly heavier than others. Next weather meteorologist Cindy Pressler joins us with more. Cindy, you've been tracking the latest. Yeah, that, those little showers are actually holding back a little bit, so they're struggling to develop this afternoon, but they will, and we should have some storms in the next few hours heading into the evening hours. But overall, moisture is going to be increasing tomorrow more than we have today. Widespread storms Thursday and Friday. That's that's really going to be the focus over the next uh, week or so. High flood potential with heavy rainfall expected. Drier air is going to come back by Sunday, so that will start moving this rain out of here. At least uh, bring it back down to where it would be normal for the rainy season. So at this point, we've had some clouds today. You can see that flow kind of pushing things from southwest to northeast. Uh, upper level flow, that is. But look at this. One little shower here just to the east of 27. Rain is now moving into Weston and right across the road. It's continuing its track to the northeast. This is light rain right now, just a couple of lightning strikes, but we're starting to see some development down here in Miami-Dade County. All it takes is these outflow boundaries and we should start to get development. So our modeling is ahead of itself at this point. We don't have this much going on, but eventually we should get more storms popping up this evening. Eventually they'll start making their way toward the coast. Development right now is over the inland areas, but those storms will move toward the coast, so we'll get some more of that rain. And then Wednesday morning, I think most of the day there will be a chance to pick up a shower thunderstorm. The development wants to form in the inland areas in the afternoon, but then by the evening it'll head back to the coastal areas. So just about anywhere you look across South Florida, there will be a chance for rain Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, very high rain chances all the way into the weekend. And this is going to be a flood risk because water setting on the road, ponding and puddling as rain chances go up to a 70 to 80% chance. We could see as much as three to five inches of rain. This just takes us up to Thursday at this point. Add Friday to it and even into Saturday. And it's because of this upper level disturbance, we're going to call it, sitting out here in the Gulf, pushing all kinds of moisture toward the Florida Peninsula. And then eventually, now the Hurricane Center is keeping an eye on this, giving it a 20% chance in the next seven days to possibly become something in the Atlantic east of Florida. But we'll be watching that very closely. By that time, we will be in the hurricane season officially. So Thursday and Friday will be the highest rain threat and then backing off this weekend. All right, thank you, Cindy. Hurricane season starts on Thursday. The CBS News Miami Next Weather team and all of us here are committed to helping keep your family safe during hurricane season. With that in mind, we invite you to join us for a CBS News Miami special, Hurricane 2023, What's Next? Chief Meteorologist and Hurricane Specialist Ivan Cabrera hosts the half hour special. It is Thursday at 7.30 p.m. right after CBS News Miami at 7. It's important information you need to know and we hope to see you then. 
The Broward School Board has narrowed the list of candidates. It's to be the next school superintendent. The school board has now decided on three finalists after nearly three hours of discussion. They are Peter Lakata. He's an assistant superintendent in Palm Beach County and is a Broward native. Louis, Louis Solano, who is a deputy superintendent in Detroit and was a former high school principal in Miami-Dade. And Cito Narcisse, he is a superintendent in East Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The three will be interviewed in person in June and a final decision will be made. Dr. Valerie Wanza, who's been with the district for more than 30 years and had tremendous support from educators, did not make it to the finals. A South Florida man accused of wielding a gun and yelling racial slurs to young protesters has learned his fate. Today he faced a judge and accepted a plea deal. CBS News Miami's Yvonne Taylor joins us from criminal court with more. Thank you. So 10 years probation instead of 55 years in prison. That was Mark Bartlett's plea agreement here in criminal court. So we're now going to start with video of what happened on that Martin Luther King Day in 2019. You see Mark Bartlett walking with his then girlfriend towards a group of young men and women wielding a gun. He was also accused of yelling racial slurs to the teenagers riding bicycles on Brickell Avenue as part of Bikes Up, Guns Down. The video became viral. Today, Deante Joseph and Kidani's Cruz consider the victims in the case listening in court to the apology. I apologize for my conduct that day. I was wrong to use those words and regret the pain that my words have caused anyone around or anyone that has seen them. The message, you know, is clear that we will not tolerate, you know, bigotry and racism. Uh, and, you know, whether it was sincere or not, Mr. Bartlett um, acknowledged his wrongdoing. Uh, and apologize, you know, to the victims. Coming up at 5.30 p.m., what the judge said about the plea agreement, as well as what these young men consider the victims also said about Bartlett's testimony. In Northwest Miami data, I'm Ivan Taylor. Back to you. In Miami-Dade, a police officer has been charged with battery. Miami-Dade officer Anna Perez is accused of getting into an argument with someone she knows. It reportedly happened at the Miller Ale House in Palmetto Bay over the weekend. Perez and another woman were accused of attacking a man over infidelities. She was off duty at the time. An investigation is underway. When we come back, your Miami Heat are headed to the finals after an incredible win in Boston. And as always, South Florida celebrates in style. The Miami Heat is in Denver after advancing to the NBA Finals. This is video of the team arriving overnight in the Mile High City. Players, staff, and the front office checking in to the team hotel following a long but no doubt fun flight from Boston. Miami took care of Boston in Game 7 to reach the 7th NBA Finals in franchise history. The Heat led throughout the game. Jimmy Butler scored a game-high 28 points on the night. Caleb Martin also came up big in Game 7. He had 26 points for the Heat. Miami would go on to win 103-84 to to win the Eastern Conference title, but there is still a lot of work to be done. I'm just confident. I know the work that we all put into it, so I know what we're capable of. But nobody's satisfied. We haven't done anything. Um, we don't play just to win the Eastern Conference. We play to win the whole thing. Everybody's confidence is so high. We got belief that we can do something incredibly special. So we're going to um, hit the ground running when we get to Denver. And uh, I like our chances. Jimmy Butler was named Eastern Conference Finals Most Valuable Player. So much fun. The Heat's Game 7 win set off pots and pan celebrations throughout Miami-Dade cities. 
Heat fans came out in droves to celebrate the conference championship. And this is video from Chopper 4 just after the Heat won outside of the Kaseya Center. But just a few minutes later, things got wild. Our Chopper 4 capturing another scene out of Westchester. Take a look at all those people out in the street, people hanging out their windows, screaming, and of course, banging on those pots and pans. Fans also hit the streets in Hialeah, and this is what it looked like on West 49th Street, jam-packed with people celebrating the white hot Miami heat. Many fans will be looking for some championship gear, of course. Now CBS News Miami's Terry Hornstein was in Southwest Miami Dade with more on that part of the story. It sure does feel good to be a Miami Heat fan. Take a look. The shirts are already out. Everyone now getting ready for Thursday. Relieved, I think. I speak on behalf of all of Miami in the sense that we got it done and we're not on the bad side of history, but got to get four more, I guess. Like so many Miami Heat fans, JP Gutierrez celebrating, but also looking forward after a win in game seven in Boston. Fans picking up shirts and hats in stores across South Florida, getting ready for the NBA Finals. Just happy, excited, going to celebrate this moment, and then Thursday kind of the next series starts for them. It wasn't just a long night for those watching the game or playing. To get these shirts ready to be printed and then sold, employees worked overnight in Fort Lauderdale. It's amazing. I mean, we have hundreds of employees that thrive off of this. It really helps them bleed, bleed Atlas and bleed the Miami Heat. We are rooting since the game, second the game started. South Florida now bracing, decked out, and excited for what's next. I'm just going to act the same way, the same confidence that Jimmy and Bam have and Coach Spo and just kind of got to get to four, I guess, right? The Miami Heat already in Denver preparing for that first game on Thursday against the Nuggets, and hopefully they'll bring it home. So instead of just the Eastern Conference champs like they are now, they will be NBA champions. In Southwest Miami, Dade, Terry Hornstein, CBS News, Miami. All right, Heat fans, we got this. Here is a look at the schedule for the NBA Finals. Games 1 and 2 are in Denver starting Thursday night. The series will shift to Miami for games 3 and 4. The series will then alternate between Denver and Miami for games 5 through 7 if necessary. And later, global leaders are taking a step towards saving the planet. What is being discussed in plastic pollution all new at 5? That's your quick cast. I'm Naja Sherman. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS News Miami.